Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us live from Fort Riley, Kansas, home of the 1st Infantry Division and the Big Red One. Thank you all for joining us online, and Brigadier General John Klein, the Commanding General of the Center of Initial Military Training, thank you for joining us as well. All right. Today's session, today's session will focus on the Army Combat Fitness Test the changes uh, to the policy that were signed by the Secretary of the Army, Secretary Christine Wormuth, and the implementation timeline, as well as answering questions that you in the room have and you online have as well. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the 16th Sergeant Major of the Army, Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael A. Grinston. Uh, okay, General Klein, I, I, I see you clapping. So. Um, and um, it's awesome. It's great to be back here uh, with the Big Red One. And I am a, a former Big Red One soldier, and I'm proud to say that. So it's good to be here with you. Before we even start talking about the Army Combat Fitness Test, I do want to recognize our soldiers that are forward deployed and, and just say how proud I am of what our Army has done. We've got several soldiers uh, in the last month that had to do a, a no-notice deployment uh to reassure our allies and our partners across the globe uh, specifically in europe and that resonates home because first brigade of the first id has deployed and had been deployed and was notified that they had to extend a little bit longer over in europe um, so i really want to say thank you uh, on behalf of all the soldiers uh, and all the citizens of the world for what you do. And as we roll out the ACFT, this is just a small portion of what we do in the United States Army. I just want us all to be aware that we have several thousands of soldiers across the globe right now ensuring our allies and partners. And I keep that foremost in our thoughts and our prayers and everything that we do and make sure that you're always ready for whatever the Army asks you to do. And we're gonna keep that in the foremost of our, our minds. But without further ado, we finally have gotten to the point where we have the Army Combat Fitness Test. So the goal here is just kind of talk about it. I'm gonna run through a lot of the information that we have. And the goal is to get through this in about 30 minutes, if it takes me a little bit longer. And then we're going to open it up for whatever questions you have. And I've also, again, thanks to General Klein, just on that screen, just went away. And then, but over here, yeah, for being here with me and the Center of Initial Military Training Commander, uh, we have been partners in this and TRADOC, the whole Army staff. We've been working on this for years. So, and I'm really proud that we've gotten to this point, and this is it. You said one April, I've told you all that probably for like three years. So one April is coming, it's right around the corner and this is your Army Combat Fitness Test. I look forward to your questions in the front. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna just jump right in. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jim Klein. He's gonna give you a history of how did we get to this point and then I'm gonna take it from there on what we're doing uh, on the rest. All right, thanks SMA. Um, really appreciate it and, and I, if, if I, uh, at the risk of uh, publicly embarrassing you, you've been an awesome teammate here for uh, uh, since I've been in command. And um, yes, this has been quite a long road. And this this particular um, accomplishment uh, is not mine for sure. Um, as you mentioned, it's a team, and it goes back actually two CGs uh, before me. Uh, so General Hibbard was a huge uh, contributor in this space over the last. Uh, he was the commander I just replaced. So if you're wondering. Uh, who I am or what CIMT is, um, you think basic training, you think uh, for for uh, for enlisted, you think about all the basic uh, training that or the uh, the basic course education and everything that goes with our officers. Uh, I, I'm that individual as well. I'm also the commander uh, for the Army's holistic health and fitness. So uh, I'm more or less your PT guy, if you will, for the Army. Um, and the purpose of this slide, it, it's just I'll go through it quickly because um, there is some. Uh, it's, I think it's relevant to kind of understand where we've been to understand how we landed where we landed. And um, so th we've been working on this probably for the better part of about 10 years. The idea came out initially, I think, around 2012. I have on my team um, lots of uh, experts in this space. 
and, and they certainly weren't working independently. Um, a lot of work was done with academia and um, professional sports organizations and international and the list goes on. And, um, and that's why our test looks a lot different, you know, from any other service out there. Um, and it is. Uh, I, I, the Brits probably have the next closest thing, but uh, it's your army that has decided to go to the next level and, and break, um, break away from something that we've been doing for 39 years. Frankly, it's been something I've been doing my entire career. It's, been, it's something that the SMA has been doing his entire career. And um, we knew that we needed um, to change. Um, but we knew that that would be a rocky road. Um, and, and like the SMA just said, I, I'm just as excited as he is that we are finally here at this at this stage. Um, the APFT, for those who don't know, we've got 10 components of, of physical fitness. And the APFT for 39 years, we focused on muscular endurance. Uh, and that's really it. And, um, you know, there's so much more involved with uh, what we got to do in our army, um, loading projectiles, for example. I listen to the SMA talking about loading like 93 uh, projectiles into a vehicle and then having to unload 93, 95 pound projectiles. Um, you, you know, we are uh, spreading the trails on howitzers. We are ruck marching all over the place. You guys know because you're doing it out there in the big red one. So we knew we needed to do something better. And that's where ACFT uh was born. And unlike the APFT just focused on one component, um, ACFT gets after all 10 of them. And, and just, just by way of education, so I mentioned muscular endurance for the APFT, but muscular strength, aerobic capacity, flexibility, power, agility, balance, reaction time, coordination, speed. We wanted to get a test that was going to incorporate all of this. And to be I mean, we started off with 25 events that we looked at and we um, and they were related at that time to those warrior tasks and battle drills that we do. That's another responsibility I have here in CIMT is those basic tasks, skill level one tasks and warrior tasks and battle drills. And we wanted a test that was going to we could link to each one of those. So we took the hardest, most physically demanding components of the warrior task and battle drills and we developed a test, we boiled this thing down, and that's where we came about with the six events. Those six events, we figured if you could train on functional fitness and then be able to perform well within uh, the ACFT, then you were gonna be more ready for combat. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, if you're training to do the ACFT or if you're training um, in, a, in a way that's gonna make you better in the ACFT, you will be better at doing your wartime tasks. Although we struggle a little bit to defend that argument. Um, so that's that's kind of the why behind the ACFT. Uh, and we really got serious about three years ago. And um, you guys can look at the objectives there. And, and a lot of these objectives still hold true today. We wanted to improve soldier readiness. We wanted to transform the culture. Um, we wanted to reduce injuries. And initial data looks like it's going to be good in, in reducing muscular skeletal injuries if you're training properly, if you're following FM 7-22, if you're doing things like periodization. Um, those things will help you reduce those injuries. And then certainly we wanted to increase overall unit readiness. And so these three blocks, as you read them from left to right, that's FY19, FY20, and FY21. And with each one of those years was an evolution in the ACFT. Um, and I think some of you, a lot of you in the room, you probably remember that. So 1.0 was, you know, that was our first one. We had this black and we had the gray and we had the gold standards. And we said, okay, if you're going to be certain MOSs, you got to, you have to score in the black. You, you guys probably remember that, um, you know, it, it, infantry and armor and, and, you know, depending on what you're going to do. And then um, if you're less, uh, uh, um, if the requirement was going to be less physical, then you could start to stagger it down from there. And that's, that's what we started. It was gender neutral. Um, the discussion was it doesn't matter male, female. If you got to do these tasks, you got to be able to form at this level. Um, we evolved over into FY20. We made an adjustment there. And the, and the point here is, that look, that look, we were evolving back then. We're evolving now, just like we did for the APFT, too. We evolved over 39 years. I think it was like four iterations when it was all said and done. But never did we get completely stagnant. Anyway, in FY20, um, we pulled the MOS standard linkage uh, away. It, it just became too hard for policy, to be honest with you. You know, if you're thinking about, think about it from a National Guard standpoint or something, and you're assigned to your, 
um, to uh, your armory and you're an 11 series and then you can no longer perform at the black standard, that, that's a little bit harder, right? Because that individual can no longer set, you know, does he get moved from the armory? Does he have to go find another MOS, reclassify, go to another location? It just became really tangled. And so we said, okay, we're just going to make a, a set of standard for, for everybody. And, um, and it was at that point we added the plank and we made it a, a go, no go event. And then in 21, we, we evolved to the, to the most recent version that you all are familiar with, um, still gender neutral, which, you know, it was the same standard for male and female. And, and we got into uh, the tiering and you, you, I know you're all familiar with it, but you could be a platinum, you could be a gold, a silver, so on and so forth. And then we added a hundred point scale to the plank. Um, and then rightfully so um congress wrote in the law within the uh, ndaa and we'll get into that later on in, in the slides but the national defense authorization act it was written in there hey look army we're not we're, we're a little bit uncomfortable here and we, we need you to answer two questions and we'll get into those later on and then um they did a study it would they, they asked for a third party to do it they did the study and we took the feedback from that study when we um, made the final changes which the sma is going to go into later but it wasn't just the RAND study and that's important to note here we looked at 630,000 scores that we had accumulated over time look given all the diagnostics we had over three years um, we looked at RAND study of course as well we took a lot of feedback from soldiers and leaders across the force and then um, we, we within our own team and talking to academia and there's a lot of folks that were involved with it um, we settled where we are right now. I shouldn't say settled. We, we, we came to a final conclusion on where we are right now with uh, the ACFT that was just approved. And mind you, it's not ACFT 4.0. Um, we're done with the enumeration. This is your Army Combat Fitness Test, and it'll be effective on 1 April. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to the SMA. Thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for that. That's a little bit of thank you. Okay, eventually uh, the mic will come back on or not. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, no. Okay, good. Somebody give me a thumbs up if it's not working. Okay, sir, can you still hear me? Okay, good. Okay, so here we go. We said it's not 4.0, so what is it? Um, it's still the state, it's relatively the same thing. Uh, we made one minor, minor change. Um, we took off the numbers. It's not 4.0. It's the Army Combat Fitness Test. Start with that. Number two, just remove the leg tuck. You had a plank, leg tuck. You had choices. No, nope, you get no more choices. It's just a plank. Um, it's you're all going to have the same experience. It's not going to be well. I did this. I did that. And it's just the plank. You're going to do the plank, and you go out. And it's so part of that was just so that. Um, you would actually have the same standard, and it made it a little bit simpler. Um, we're going to start one April, and you have to. to you got to first of all, please read the Army Directive if you hadn't. Um, I know I'm sure you hadn't because it just came out at 10 o'clock this morning. So, if you get a chance, if you're a leader, go back and read it, and then read it again. You're going to hear what we're going to say, pull out the Army Directive, and then read it. It's okay. Am I following everything in there? That's number one. One April starts. Uh, a diagnostic says because we made a change, a minor change. Maybe you've been doing leg tucks the whole time. You haven't even done a plank. Um, and not that would surprise me if you've never done planks. But either way, we're giving you an opportunity. Um, on one April, you could take the PT test. You won't be flagged on one April. Okay, you're not going to be flagged on one April. You have from one April uh, to one October to take a diagnostic PT test. In one October, if you have not passed the ACFT, uh, you're going to have to take the ACFT. And if you fail in one October, you will be flagged. Okay, key dates. Starts right now. Actually, seven days, eight days from now. So it's going to start. You can take a diagnostics. But here's here's another a little twist to this. At some point in time, I can take this diagnostic from one April the one October. And if you say, yep, I'm good, you can say, you can say, please put that in DTMS, and that's going to be my test of record starting in one October. So 
you could have a test of record that predates 1 October, and that'll be the individual. So I've taken a lot of ACFTs in the last three years. I just Anybody else has taken a couple? Okay, yeah, you may be not want to take like four or five more ACFTs. You take that and you say, I'm good. I don't need, I've already, I got 600. Why do I need to take another one in October? So you're good. Um, you can go back. It will not be effective till 1 October, but it'll count all the way to April 23. So you have an opportunity to take a test and count that as your test of record. Um, so that is one change. So, but if you fail the ACFT uh, in 1 April, you will not be flagged. But 1 October, you will be. So you'll have to take another ACFT. And if you don't pass that one, you will be flagged. So you take your diagnostic. If you fail that one, you will not be flagged. Let me clarify that. You'll have to take another one in October. If you don't pass that, your unit is authorized to flag you at that point. Okay, um, so that is a little bit of change. There is a, li a different, for a longer period of time if you are a United States Army Reserve soldier or an Army National Guard soldier. So you're going to have more time because you know, one week in a month, in theory, we're giving you more time to do your diagnostic, and that will go all the way to April of 23. So active component and AGR soldiers. What I told you, one April and one October, that is for you. That is correct. Um, when you get to the Army National Guard and Army Reserve, you have a little bit more time and your clock will start in April of 23. And at any time you feel that you've met the goal, uh, you can do that. Those are the meaning you have passed your diagnostic, I'm good to go. Okay, so those are the major changes and that's how some key dates, and I will go into more on this as we go through, but those are the big dates that we have. Okay. So how, why, how did we get to this point? So the National Defense Authorization Act um, said the Secretary of the Army must do another independent uh, study. I say another because there actually was the University of Iowa did an independent study on the Army combat fitness test. But it said you may, the Secretary of the Army may not implement the, the test until the independent study is done. And we have to look at the impacts of climate on training and testing. And the second one is, you know, what would be the impacts for recruiting and retention, especially with different MOS and other things. And what happened is Rand came back and said, we looked at the independent study and they came up with recommendations for the Army. So we did look at uh, the impacts of climate and we looked at the impacts um, that would have on training and testing. They saw a small degree of, of change in there saying, if you have 90 degrees or above, you may have like five or 10 points difference, but it's all different. It depends on when you do it and when you take it. And the impacts of recruiting and retention, we'll kind of talk about that. Um, and I'll talk about the recommendations and how do we get there based off their recommendations. But number one, on the impacts, mostly on retention was, you know, they recommended based off of what they looked at is that their recommendation was to gender norm the test. That was from the RAND study based off of what the, um, the law had said. And it says they ensure parity of the pass rate in groups. And I can talk about that. The second piece is recommendation from RANS. The Army needs to collect and analyze data under record conditions. So some people said, well, when you read the RAND study, and I know I'm certain all of you will, um, or you will not, uh, you can go in and it says, you know, it, it talks about this thing of validity. It says, well, this isn't valid and this isn't valid. We have to have a test of record and you, it has to count. So what they said is, I don't know when that score, what's the motivation? So if it doesn't count, you know, and you run and we had some records on the test, you know, that we looked at, it says, okay, you just ran 35 minutes on your two mile run. 
and, and you were running. You weren't on a profile. So there's there's some discrepancies there. You know, most people can walk two miles faster than 35 minutes. You know, maybe, you know, most. Um, so Rand's recommendation is that we need those record condition, and we still need to analyze that. So when you read it and it talks about valid, you know, validity of the test, that is to a different standard, and we made the recommendation changes. So we are moving forward with the test, and that's why one October um, earlier. Okay, so major change was, I said we took out the, the leg tuck. Um, let's talk about climbing. I did talk about that. Um, we did look at it, and they had a recommendation. So we said in the Army Directive, commanders may not require well but they need to not required so commanders need to be aware uh, of what happens when you have certain climate conditions so we didn't see a large point difference the second piece of some of the law and the rand study talked about deploy well we already actually have a policy or actually we have a, a field manual that says you shouldn't require uh soldiers to take a a physical fitness test in combat. And that's actually been the same for a long time. It's in our doctrine already. It says, you know, commanders shouldn't uh, say, hey, I know they're shooting at you right now. Let's give you the Army combat fitness test. So that's actually in our doctrine and that is alive and well. That's on the, that's on um, what we would do for climate and combat and deployment. So, and I'm sorry, on the climate, we have to say, okay, Commanders should take in a uh, climatization period. So if I go from Fort Riley to Fort Carson, where there is a change in elevation, you should have some period of time, and we're writing that in the Army Directive, commanders should look at a climatization. So one day you're at the 4,500 at Fort Carson shouldn't be the day you're taking the PT test. You need time to climatize in that location, and that's in the Army Directive. The second piece we talk a lot about is recruiting. One thing that actually didn't change is we already we still have the OPAC. It didn't so the reason I say we still have the OPAC, we didn't re require you to take the ACFT to come in the Army. So we should not see any changes to accessions, meaning when you come in, because you already have the, the physical assessment test, that did not change. That's been in implementation for years. And believe it or not, you've had a deadlift for years. It was 120. And that's part of the physical assessment to come in the Army. And that's been around. So we don't see any changes to assessments. Um, the second piece was arm retention. And we'll talk about uh, grading and accessions and what the, what the points are going to go and how, how we're going to get after that and the timeline the points start. And so when we get to the, re the retention, because of the gender norms, we don't see that we'll have any changes in how uh, soldiers will re-enlist or not in the Army. And that's why we may want to take the changes. It is evidence-based. So part of that RAND study on validity was, well, the study showed there was a very small sample size. When you read the rest, I think it was maybe 46 women and 250 men, and we tried to validate the test. We made some changes, and we didn't go back and revalidate it based off those changes, and we had a very small sample size. We now have 630,000 sample sizes, and that's why we made some of the minor tweaks that we made. So we have a very large sample size than what we have. And that's why some of you all are like, okay, I keep taking this ACFT. The SAR major army looks at it every week. And I keep sending notes out to your SAR majors about, hey, why are you not taking the PT test? We needed the data to make an informed decision on we, if we need to make the changes. So there is a little bit of why why you kept taking that. It's because we needed really good data in order to inform us on what this is going to look like. So it is evidence-based on the changes that we made. We also wanted to mitigate the impacts to all the groups uh, and subgroups. Um, 
And I'll talk a little bit about that when I talk about the leg tuck here in a minute. One thing is training over time. So the recommendation says, hey, when you have, from the RAND study, when you had the time, you can do well on the ACFT. Um, so we made a few changes on the timeline. So in the past, if you failed the Army uh, physical fitness test, you only had 90 days. You had to take it again. If you didn't pass in 90 days, you were separated from the Army. So based off the RAND study, we're giving you more time. We've got now six events. So we're going from 90 days to 180. You still only get two times to take it, but we're giving you more time to say, hey, we, we changed the test. We got all these events. So instead of 90 days, we're going to give you 180 days. That's if you're an active component soldier. If you're a reservist, uh, United States Army Reserve or um, Army National Guard, that time is uh, longer. I think it's 240 days total. So you get more time to train uh, because we did make a change to the test. So over time, we're going to phase this in, and I'll talk about the phasing a little bit more. But we're also giving you more time to retrain if you fail the Army Combat Fitness Test. You get double what you had for the Army Physical Fitness Test. But it is still two times. But if at any point in time in there you say, I'm good. I was having a bad day on that day. I didn't feel well. You weren't listening. And you made me take the PT test anyway. I failed. And you come back and with your commander and you say, sir, ma'am, I'm good. I'm ready to take the test. I did a diagnostic score, you know, 580. I'm ready to go. You can take it. So, but the max amount of time you have uh, in the active component will be 180 days um, and no less than 120. So you can't come back and say, well, okay, you got max is 180. So, but I want you to do it 90. No, it's 120. So if you say, no, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, about 120, 180, you got to take a PT test. Okay. And no longer than 180 after that, it's time to, time to get after the PT. And then last thing is one of the recommendations from Rand was governance. Have a, form a formal governance forum, and I'll, I'll show you a quick slide on the governance here in a minute. So we have a formal governance forum that will go to the under, the vice, and the Sergeant Major Army, and we'll look at this on a biannual basis. There'll be monthly working groups to kind of look at where we're going, and then eventually uh, a couple times a year, they'll bring it up and say, hey, do we need to make any changes any recommendations? I don't see any major recommend changes to the ACFT. It took us 40 years to get this version, so uh, I just trust me. I don't see us going, hey, let's go redo that again. So it, it's going to be a while. But there may be minor changes uh, in recommendations over time, and we've done that with the old APFT, but I don't see any major changes. So when PFC Whitaker, 40 years from now, when you're the Sergeant Major Army, you can go ahead and make a new one. Okay, good luck. It was awesome. Um, we got here. Okay, thanks. The, what you're seeing right now are the max and min slides. Um, um, not slides. The max and min of the standards. We went and we said it is now gender uh, norm, and it's age group. It's like the old age groups from the APFT. They're right there. What you see on there is actually... Um, your men and your max and by age group and it goes all the way up uh, for anybody that happens to be 62 it's right there and those scales are for you I'll let you stare at that okay so why did we go back number one it was one of the recommendations um, from the RAND study that's number one number two is this is a general fitness test so everybody needs to be fit and you know depending on your age and your gender, it's a general fitness test. What we were trying to do, it was always a general fitness test, but you heard General Klein talk about it. We were trying to, we we're trying to cram a whole bunch of other things into it. Like, what about this MOS? And what about that MOS? And what about this unit and that unit? And we said, we need to make it simple. So for a general fitness test, we, we normed it, and then then maybe later we could go back and say, what about this MOS and what about that MOS? Uh, but at, for a general fitness test, uh, that's the major event of why well, we said we're going to have these age groups and these storm, norms. And the same thing. There is one standard. When you look at the scale, there is one standard for the plank for men and women by age group. Um, very similar to what you had 
on the sit-ups. There was one scale. So when you look at there, there may be different age groups, men and women, but the time for the plank is the same for men and women. And just a small minor note, the Marine Corps does actually have a plank and our standards are higher or harder. Where do you get all that? Okay. Uh, we removed the leg tuck. So when you read the RAND study, this is where I will talk a few minutes about validity. It says we can't validate the leg tuck. I will caution you on this statement. Just because you can't validate it doesn't mean, oh, the leg tuck is a horrible exercise. Read the whole page. It's actually page 14. I've read it so many times. I've got pages memorized. So on that page, there's a scale. And on the top of the scale, it says it's multi-component exercise. But that comes into play. And I'll talk about this whole validity. So we can't validate the leg tuck for all subgroups. That's what it actually says in the verbiage. And then in the chart, it says there's a number associated and it looks like it's, you know, it's a good exercise, but it is. What it says that, but the, but here's why it's hard to validate, right? There's a component of grip strength. There's also a component of upper body and then a core. So those three, if you take away grip strength and you cannot hold on to the bar, I can't validate your core strength. That's the validation we're talking about with the leg tuck. You could have some core strength, but you don't actually have the grip strength, so it's hard to validate the core. So we're going with the plank, because then I can validate your core with the plank, and I can't validate it if you can't do any leg tucks. You might actually have some core strength, but you don't have the grip strength. So um, I encourage you all, don't take out all the climbing drills in the manual. They're still there. They're a really good exercise, and it's multi-component. We're just not going to have that as far as our fitness test because it's hard to validate if you don't have the grip strength. Don't think I don't need grip strength, okay? And I'll use my own examples. Go, if you, you question it on where you need grip strength, go down to the howitzer section. And even if you're not a 13 Bravo, Go stand down there and then try to load the fast V or the cat V with 90 pounds of rounds and they weigh 95 pounds and load 90 of those into the, and you'll figure out you really do need some grip strength in the army. Okay, so don't take away, hey, we never need grip strength. Um, but we took that and tried to validate for all subgroups, we need to validate the plank. And even in the same RAND study, it says we can't, we couldn't validate the plank. Rand even says it because it's going back to validate it because we had somebody would do a leg tuck and somebody would do a plank, somebody would do a leg tuck and somebody does a plank. And they said it's hard to validate if everybody's doing something different, if that's good for warrior tasks and battle drills. So to actually get validity, you need everybody doing the same thing. And then you could say, is it good? Uh, or you'd have to either do it for this group or that. So that's a lot about the validity and why we took it out. Okay. Let's talk a little bit. We're going to get to uh, uh, some of the administrative policies here in a minute. So the first thing is temporary profiles. Um, so you, there is no change to the Army standards. If I have a temporary profile, you still don't take the PT test. That's That's been the policy for a long time. So just so you know, I'm not telling you anything new. But for some people, they're like, oh, Sergeant Major, I was told to do this. I don't know what you're told. I'm just telling you Army policy is if you have a temporary profile, you don't take the PT test. Permanent profiles. If you're on a permanent, not to be confused with temporary, permanent profile, you still take all the events that you're capable of taking in on the Army combat fitness test. If you can do a max deadlift, if you can do the spread drag carry, but you can't do a push-up, you got a bad rotator cup, and you, you said, well, we could keep you in the Army, you won't take that event. You will be scored at the minimum, not get extra points because you didn't take the, the test. You won't. You, know, you want to argue with me. I got it. We can ask questions about that. But if you don't take that event, you will get 60 points. 
Uh, and if you score high on the spread draft carry because you did that one, you'll get more points. But any event you don't take uh, for a pro profile, you'll just get the minimum points. So, um, but you will take all the events that you can. Okay. And there is a go no go for the alternate events. We added one alternate event back in. The alternate event that we just that you didn't have until uh, we just rolled this out was the walk. And so why do we put that in there? So there's a lot of questions about equipment. And you had a bike, you had a swim, you had a rope. And what I found is we didn't issue that equipment. It was a unit purchase. And some units didn't purchase. Um, so when I looked back and said, hey, I think if your unit didn't purchase it, and it's mostly, and I'm not saying, you know, you know the Army National Guard or uh, the Army Reserve doesn't have equipment. That's not true. It's not correct. Um, but if I'm in a different state and I've got equipment over here and the rower's over there, I don't have a rower over here. And if that's your alternate event, it's hard to train for an alternate event if you don't have the rower. So we said, let's do this alternate event of walk. So we brought that back in. We may take it out later, but right now um, the walk is still is the uh, one other minor change. Took out the leg tuck and we added a walk as an alternate event. Um, so we added that in. And then the next is the governance. Very quickly, we added a governance for you all. There's a monthly working group. Again, I told you at the top. We're going to look at it. We're going to look at it biannually, and then any decisions will be made um, from the Department of the Army as we go forward, as we look at this. And then the moment we're all waiting for is the, the wonderful slide on policies and how it's going to go in. So we'll go to this last piece, maybe. Please go to the. Okay, good. There you go. Okay. Um, I'm going to go down line by line. Number one, flags. Maybe we do a little check on learning. So when can you be flagged if you don't pass the ACFT? Okay, 1 October. There you go. When can you be separated? Well, that's not the next one. I said I go line by line. Okay, if I am an Army National Guard or a United States Army Reserve soldier, when can I be flagged? Okay, April 23. Wow, you were listening. I was surprised there for a minute. Okay, good. April 23. ETS. Okay. So if I go in in October, I fail the PT test. And you said, well, Sergeant Major, I get a chance to, to take the test again, um, and I need to re-enlist. And I'm about the ETS. You cannot re-enlist without a valid ACFT. And believe it or not, that's the same with the APFT. However, you can extend. So you can do an extension and say, hey, I want to do an extension. I want to stay in the Army. I'm a good soldier. You know, like that. I, I failed the test. You can, you can extend. You do that extension. You pass the ACFT um, within two times, 180 days. You get a seven-month extension. You pass. You can stay in the Army. You don't pass. You can't re-enlist. Okay, you can extend if you don't pass starting 1 October. Re-enlistment. Thought I was pretty clear on that. If you don't pass the ACFT, you cannot re-enlist in the Army. You have to pass the ACFT. That is no change. Same thing, APFT. You don't pass, you don't stay in the Army. Okay. Um, you have to pass it within the last 12 months. So you can't, you know, forever, I've never passed, I keep doing extension or something like that. So you, you got to validate, you've done the ACFT, and then for some reason you fail. Um, you can extend, but you can't stay in. You can't physically re-enlist while you're flagged until you actually pass the ACFT. Um, it is going to be a requirement. Once you graduate basic training, you will have to pass the Army Combat Fitness Test once you get through AIT. If you don't pass an AIT, you're not, they're not coming to your units uh, for initial military training. Professional military training, 1 October. You go to any school, Army National Guard, Army Reserve, or active component. I go to ALC, and there is a graduation requirement. You have to pass the ACFT starting on 1 October. You go to school, 
you got to take the test. You don't take the test. You don't pass. You don't graduate. If it's a graduation requirement for that school, some schools don't. I don't know if you go to Ranger School, there's a PT test. And then there's also a five mile run. You don't pass that, you don't graduate. So we're not implementing anything new. But if you go to the basic leader course, it is a graduation requirement to do the old PT test. You're gonna have a graduation requirement on one October to do the ACFT. You have to pass, you don't graduate. All compos, all compos. It's, we're starting on the same date. Okay. Um, evaluations on one October. If you got a through date past one October, you can now add. I scored 600 on the ACFT because I know for our longest we had no positive or negative. There's nothing on your interior for two years. You can't write anything on physical fitness. So in one October, your through date is on there. You can now write positive and negative. It's negative. It's probably not going to look good. Uh, but you can now write uh, through date through 1 October. You can write that on um, your NCOER. The same thing, the reserve component is the same timeline. It is 1 April. So a little more time for them to start. If you're an active component, 1 October. You're writing it through date of your NCOER gets looked at. And will be looked at on the boards starting um, six months. Promotions. This is where it gets a little uh, squirrely on us. Okay, so promotion boards. After, if it's a centralized promotion board, after 1 October, they can look at your scores. However, semi-centralized, your ACFT score will not start counting on 1 October. It's actually going to be 1 April 23. And somebody wants to say, well, why is that, Sergeant Major? Well, I can't have the whole army take a PT test on 1 October. So what happens in, you know, how do you say your name? I see you. How do you say it? Okay. Do you decide when you get to take your four record PT test in your unit? You just go and said, hey, we're going to do this on this day. You don't, do you? Right? A lot of people in this room probably don't make that decision, right? So what happens... If my unit gives me the PT test on 2 October, and I say, okay, 2 October it starts, you get promotion points for the ACFT, but because your unit didn't schedule it, you don't get promotion points, and that person gets promoted ahead of you. Is that fair? Okay, that's why we're not starting. You get six months, well, actually you get a year, to take the ACFT. If you hadn't taken it by then, Okay, well, you're not getting pro points. I don't know what to tell you. And you're going to get separated out of the Army. So, um, so yes, uh, you're not going to get promotion points on 1 October. So, and, yes, the APFT will still count. I would say that, you know, I got it. I'm trying to – we're trying to get – the APFT is, is – we're, it's gone. Just, but if you have a valid APFT at some point, and you're promotable, those promotion points are still going to count till 1 April. It's because I don't want to take all promotion points out of the promotion system for you to get promoted. Physical fitness still should matter in the Army for who it should count for something for getting promoted. And that's the only reason that you get to still have that APFT score is that I got to give everybody in the whole Army a chance to take it, and you've all had a chance to take the APFT. Because we wrote in the XOR that you could take an APFT if you were promotable. He said, if you want to go back and take it, go ahead. The, the old test. So you could. Um, so if you've got that valid score on the old APFT, that will still give you some promotion points until 1 April. And then we're going to reset the clock. So you still have to take it. You don't pass. You're still going to be flagged. Uh, so I passed APFT, but I failed this one. No, I'm sorry. You're still going to be flagged. You're probably not going to get promoted. But your promotion points will still count if the active component for a period of time till April of 23. And then after that, they will go away. Okay. So we can ask more questions on that if you'd like. Permanent profiles, I talked about that. Temporary profiles, when you read this extension in a very long time, 
for temporary promotions, uh, temporary profiles on APFT, it's because you may have a temporary profile for a long period of time uh, for whatever reasons. Um, so those scores may count for you for a period of time. And you may even just get a blanket score in one April. So if I'm, for whatever reason, I'm promotable and I have not taken an APFT ever and I'm on this temporary profile for whatever reason that comes around in April and you're in good standings in the Army and you're on a temporary profile, uh, you could get some promotion points in the ACFT, but it will be the minimum. It will be 360 points, okay? And I can answer questions on that if you'd like. And then lastly is separations. Uh, enlisted personnel, on 1 April of 23, you will be separated if you do not pass an ACFT. You, let me rephrase that. You can be separated. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain what I mean. So again, we're not assuming the whole Army takes the PT test on 1 October. Maybe you take it on 2 October. That's when your clock starts, when you take the ACFT. So just like any unit, when you schedule it, because you don't control that, when I take the ACFT, you got six months. In theory, if I took it on 1 October, and I don't pass it, six months is 1 April. Okay? So don't, for all the leaders in the back row, don't try to shorten the clock. It's still 180 days. But 1 April, I can separate you. So if you take the PT test and you fail in January of 23, don't try to separate somebody in April 23 because the Sergeant Major Army said you could. Yes, you can separate someone, but that's the date that's fixed from 1 October, assuming you take a PT test in 1 October. Does that make sense? You have that six months. Whenever you take it and you were to fail, you have six months to recruit from there. And the clock is 1 April. We just said 1 April 23 separations will start. Is because if you took it on 1 April and you failed, that's the date. But that's not the date. If you haven't passed by then, we're going to kick you out of the Army. If you fail later, that's when your clock as an individual starts. Okay. Um, and there, and that that date for the active duty is 1 April 23, and the Army National Guard and the Army Reserve is actually 1 April 24 because their timelines are offset. So they get the same amount of time to recoup. Separate uh, will be 1 April 24 for the Army National Guard and the Army Reserve. Okay. And then uh, I will close, um, and what I'm saying is please read the policy. Um, pull out the Army Directive. Um, you can read the RAND study if you'd like, but more importantly, if you're a leader, pull out that Army Directive, kind of go by there, read it, and then think about it, then read it one more time. But I basically kind of covered most of that. Uh, there will be some nuances in that. And I um, welcome all your questions. Uh, leadership matters in physical fitness, and we'll open it up for questions. So thank you. Thank you, SMA. Just as a reminder, uh, a lot of the, the things that you saw today and that policy is available at army.mil slash ACFT. SMA will begin our questions right here in the room. Uh, Sergeant, I believe you have a uh, Sergeant Major, uh, Staff Sergeant Rieger with BCO uh, 118. Uh, I'm the company MFT. Uh, my biggest question with the H2F and the new standards for the maxes uh, and skeletal and muscular injuries, is there going to be any changes to the AT, uh, H2F buildup uh, with the possibility of the muscular and skeletal injuries? Is there going to be a relook or no? Yeah. Um, I'll kind of give you general guidance, and hopefully uh, General uh, Klein heard that. He's the holistic health and fitness. He already told you he's in charge of all that, so I appreciate your question. Um, we do want to make sure that we do implement our holistic health and fitness program. Um, what we've done, for those that may not know, we're adding registered dietitians, occupational therapists, physical therapists to brigades. So you have this you know, capability down in your formations. And then to your specific question on muscular skeletal injuries, I'll turn it over to General Klein, sir. Hey, hey thanks, SMA. SMA. Thanks for that question. We got a little bit of an echo here. So, um, so 7-22 with this ACFT is is absolutely still relevant, just like it was in the in the previous version. And if you're less than familiar, I, I would encourage you to to break it out um, and take a look at how periodization works and how we build 
uh, physical fitness up because um, it lays it out there in, in detail. And as the SMA was was describing, for those of you that do have the the benefit of having an H2F team, um, then you then you absolutely have all the resources. And the intent, just for everybody in this audience, so you understand, holistic health and fitness, and, and this largely applies um, uh, to the active component when I talk about these resources. The intent is, is that uh, 110 brigades by 2030 would be resourced with these teams that are embedded into your formations. We already fielded 28 brigades right now have H2F teams. And as the SMA was describing, you've got a director that's overall in charge. It's a 37 person team that's within the brigade. You have a physical therapist, you have an occupational therapist, you have registered dietitians, you have strength and conditioning coaches, you have athletic trainers in there, you have cognitive specialists. And um, ideally, all of these individuals are located in one facility. And so, and that's a, that's up for discussion right now within the Army, but we have a soldier performance readiness center. Consider a, a, a gymnasium that has not only the, uh, probably the artificial turf right down the middle of it, like we're seeing in a lot of the gymnasiums and we have the pull-up bars and we have the hex bars and all that. But also in that facility are the offices that um, contain those specialists that I just mentioned. So if you are a young soldier and you're coming in and you say, I've got a sore ankle or I want to work on a new PT program or I, I want to do preventative measures so I don't have to always treat injuries, then you go into the Soldier Performance Readiness Center and you go and you see the physical therapist that says, hey, sit down, private client. Let me talk to you about here is an individualized program for you. And that's what we're doing with H2F are individual programs. And we say, we think you need to do this set of exercise. And then you there's your list for the next six weeks. And then you go off to see the registered dietitian. They say, hey, given your body mass, given such and such, we think these are the, these are the meals that you need to be eating. How are you doing on sleep? How are you doing mentally right now? Well, I've been feeling a little depressed. Then you go see the cognitive specialist. You, go, you, you get my drift here. All of it is included in there. And, and, you know, as our Army senior leaders have said, many, we do a better job, or historically we have, we've done a better job of tracking uh, the maintenance uh, status of a striker or a, uh, of a pacing item, and we know exactly where the parts are anywhere within the system, and, but we, we, we struggle to do that with our people. And this is kind of at the heart of putting our people first. This, this um, um, investment that our Army senior leaders have made in this area of H2F is significant, and it absolutely is putting you up front and center. Until you get these resources, 7-22, a lot of those resources are already there, right there with the big red one. They just may not be in this nice little single gymnasium, but they are resident on the facility and your chain of command is tracking those, those uh, resources. I would encourage you though, take a look at this. We, we, people are talking about periodization. Take a look at the proper way in which we are trying to work out our individuals. So often is the case we say, hey, let's go out and do the workout of the day. And whether it's CrossFit or you, you, you name it, we go out and, and that's where we're hurting people, to be honest with you, right? We're going to say, hey, we're going to do overhead presses. We're going to do all this stuff. And we haven't really looked at setting the base and then building and then tapering and then getting to the combat phase and then doing an appropriate recovery. So hopefully that answers your question. All right. SMA, thank you. Uh, or General Klein, thank you. Our next question will be here in the room and then we'll go online uh, for the next set of questions. Man, Sergeant Major Williams, Dagger Brigade, thank you for coming out, Sergeant Major. Uh, this may be a way too soon question, Sergeant Major, but do we have any idea when this will be implemented with EIB, ESB, FMB? Um, I, don't, I don't think that's way too soon. I don't, I don't have a specific date on when we're going to go with the expert soldier badge, expert infantry badge, and the expert field medical badge. But the goal is to get that all aligned so that we have the test. We're kind of just waiting for this date um, so that we're going to say, OK, what is this going to look like for uh, expert infantry badge, expert soldier badge and expert field medical badge? I will tell you um, right now it will be one standard. I just want to be really clear, very clear. And that's what we have right now. Just so you know, I'm not changing anything. If you go for the expert infantry badge, and we have men and women going for that badge, there's one standard. Just like ranger school, there's one standard. When you go up, you go to do the task, you do the task. Okay, so when we get to the expert uh, badges, there will be you know one 
one base. That's my goal. And we will go with the Army Combat Fitness Test version of that at some point. Uh, but what we've already transitioned to, in case you might have missed it, it's already have uh, this one thing. We do the same thing for Ranger School. We do the same thing for EIB. And it's been that way for a while. Uh, we've got some work to do. I think a reasonable expectation is about six months. My goal is to have, what is this going to look like? It, and it will probably be different for each batch. So, um, oh my goodness, we need to be comfortable with that. An infantry soldier, you know, I want you to score higher in your physical fitness than someone else. I just want to, I want to be clear on that right now. So, uh, but what is that going to look like if you're going for your expert uh, infantry badge? Again, my goal is to have that set by October. Hey, Tradoc is supporting your goal, SMA. I had that conversation hey, with SM Hendricks today. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, he owns it right there, by the way, uh, especially the expert soldier badge. That goes through CIMT, expert entry badge, goes all the way down to uh, Fort Benning, an expert medical badge, OTSG, and a lot of it's under trade off. So I just go to one. I got one source. It's called the Training and Doctrine Command. So, go ahead. Thanks, sir. All right, Mr. Mayor, our next question is from social media on Reddit. Uh, it says, the Army had me as an NCO get in front of my soldiers for the last few years and let every soldier know the Army is gender and age neutral on physical fitness now. Every leader in the Army, male or female, would be held to the same standard. Now that's thrown out. We don't even have the same minimums, and I have to be fine with it. If I would have been fine with it if we had kept the same minimums because then I could at least explain to my soldiers uh, that this is the minimum level of fitness for a soldier. What am I supposed to tell my soldiers now? Um, take the HTFT. <laughs> <laughs> so seriously, it's a, I know, um, that's kind of how this works. Um, you're going to walk out, you're going to say, okay, uh, take the HTFT, do it, and, and, and live and be free. And this is what it is. It's a general fitness test. Okay? There are other tests that we could implement, and we already have, that are age and gender neutral. I already talked about one. It's OPAC. I already talked about another one too, right? Which was Ranger School. And I told you where we're going with the expert badges, okay? Which is already there. There are a lot of things that we already do that are age and gender neutral, and that's not gonna change. But when we went to a general fitness test, and we don't wanna disadvantage any groups in the United States Army, is very comfortable with that. And what you tell your soldiers is go out and take the ACFT. And when you score 600, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. If you don't like that score, go to the highest standard of 600. Okay? The goal is to make us more fit. And it's taken us 40 years to finally change the PT test. We have done it. We've had three failed attempts at that. Um, they came with a recommendation and we followed it and we have a better test than we had before and i i've also been the same one that said that and and guess what the rucksack still is age and gender neutral and you do have to take a physical fitness test so there are still a lot of things that are age and gender neutral the how it's around the rucksack so there there are still things out there on a general phys physical fitness test it's going to be gender norm, and that's what the Army has told us to do, and that's what I'm telling you to do. And guess what? Move out and draw fire. That's just kind of how we are. You know, hey, you know, sometimes you go, hey, I want to extend 1-1, one, one and, and I want you to stay in Europe. You go, well, I don't like that. I go, okay, I appreciate it. I don't like it either, but this is what the Army and the nation is asking to do. This is what we're telling you to do, so I really appreciate your question. Now go execute a plank and do the, uh, do the ACFT. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next question comes all the way from Wiesbaden, Germany. Sergeant Major of the Army, Princeton. I am DJ Oz, also known as Sergeant Austin Baker, here at AFN Wiesbaden. And I have a question. So I want to know, how will the promotion point scale be affected by the ACFT since the APFT was on a 300-point scale? Okay, for those that didn't hear the question, all the way from uh, Sergeant Rainier's phone from Wiesbaden and uh, as he comes in. So how will the promotion points scale be affected? Because it was a 300-point scale. Now it's going to be 360, and you know, now all of a sudden now you don't get max points. I promise you that. It's going to be a 600-point scale. Um, 
And if you, if you weren't real familiar with the old uh, promotion point system, um, but let's do a test. How many promotion points did you get for if you max the APFT under the, uh, the old scale? Does anybody know? You should know. You're a sergeant. You fell underneath that program. So what was it? Okay, it was 180 promotion points. Okay, so we're going to change. We are going to change the scale. The top is going to be 600. Um, we're probably not going to leave it at 180 promotion points. So when we talked about this a lot, was move it down to some number. That was about a quarter of your grade. It was all on physical fitness. And I love physical fitness. Do it every day. My Sundays. Uh, but I think we were waiting the scale. So we're looking at changing the scale down, maybe go to about 100 promotion points. And then you know what I want to focus in on are getting you to those expert badges, right? Because I think if, you know, physical fitness is great, but you know what's even better? You're really good with your rifle. <laughs> so I don't have to. I don't have to physically overcome you because I could just shoot you. Right? Yeah, I'm good with that. Maybe you are. I don't know. So, how to, but this. So don't confuse when I say we may go a little off of physical fitness. Um, I'm not going to put all those points to college education. I want to be very clear on that. It's going to be in your warrior task, expert soldiers, rifle marksmanship, ranger tab. So I'm looking at those skills as a soldier and increasing that, um, and that's where some of those promotion points are going to go, 600, and don't quote me because we haven't actually got, but right now it's about 120, we'll take it down a little bit from 180 to about 120. When you score 600, it'll be graduated, you know, minimum here, top here, you're going to get, you know, 120, 120 promotion points, you get 600, you'll get those points. And that's kind of what we're looking at, so we're going to take it down a little bit. And then we're going to increase when you get those badges. Um, believe it or not, like a combat infantry badge may be worth 30 points, and the expert infantry badge may be worth 60 points. And the back row's like, yes, our ranger. Uh, so same thing, combat action badge, 30 points. Expert soldier badge, 60 points. So a, a special in your skill. So that's where we're going for promotion points. That'll be 1 April 23. It may change, so if you walk out of here and say, ah, this is what we're doing, okay, I got it. I got the right to kind of massage that, biannual, forward, I get to look at it. Okay, but that's where we're going right now. Thank you for the question. Sir, anything I missed? Probably like, no? Okay, good. You nailed it. Thanks, sir. Just going to check on learning. All right, so may I'd like to come back here in the room. So if you do have a question here in the room, if you just raise your hand. Uh, and so because I did kind of spring that on them, um, I guess – if there anybody in the room with a question. All right, great. Thank you. I think there's a yeah, overflow room too, I thought. Yeah, Sergeant Major, first Sergeant Nunley through answer to your military police company. I have several questions, but I'll just ask one. But will when will DTMS uh, begin record keeping that we can actually see on a regular basis? One October. That's that's yeah, I know. Well, yeah. We we blanked it out, but so one October, you can go in and say this, you know, um, diagnostic test is now valid, and you can go put that into DTMS. So right now, that's a good question. Maybe we have to go look and say why can't I open it up right now? Okay. So. And hey, down. That's CAC. That's, SMA. that's CAC. So I'll, I'll go. Uh, we'll, we'll carry that one. Yeah. That it, matter of fact, I'm going to Leavenworth uh, tomorrow. So there may not be any harm in opening that up for you right now on like 1 April. I don't know, but that's a good question. We'll take that on as a do out. Sir Major, also um, for those with a blank APFT on our monthly reports um, right now, they can either take another APFT, um, but the ACFT hasn't been an option. Will the APFT continue to be an option all the way through 1 October? or can they use both between now and 1 October? The APFT will not be an option, zero. We're going to stamp out the APFT. We're going we're to do it. We're going to get rid of It's going. The only reason uh, you will look at and think about anything for APFT 
will only be if you're a, a specialist to going to sergeant or a sergeant going to staff sergeant. And everybody else, get rid of it. It's done. It's over. We did it. We made it. ACFT. Yes. All right, SMA, I'll give the room a few more minutes to think about a question. Uh, we'll go to Twitter, and this says, uh, I know changes have just been implemented, but are there any plans to implement a PT badge similar to the one we had for APFT? Yes. Um, yes. We, we are looking for a PT badge. And one recommendation, and we haven't completely vetted that, is what does that look like? Well, I'll go back to what we said before is – it's a little different. So maybe it's not like uh, we used to say you get 90 points in each event, right? Remember, you know, you got 90 points, it's 270, you know, you're, you're knocking it out of the park. One recommendation was what we said in 3.0 is like if you're at the top 1% of your gender, you're platinum. And then, you, and then we would snap the chalk line. So what we said when we said that is we're not going to, you know, do this every month, right? So CIMT may be able to jump in on this. Is that CIMT could look at and go in and said, okay, here's who's at the top physical condition, regardless of. Um, let me get it right. So it would be by gender, but not by age. And we could say you're at the top one percent of all men and the women. Uh, men in the army, you're the top 1%. So that's one recommendation. The other recommendation is just go 90 points in each event. Why would we want to go to that top 1%? Does anybody know? Okay. It's like Star Major just waiting for you to tell me what to say. Okay, so it would be to actually try to get us all trying to do better. So don't take, I got, you know, you know, 590 on the PT test, that's not good enough, all right? The goal is to make us all better. And if I say, okay, this year, top 1% is, you know, 340 on deadlift, I did my 1230 on my run, I did my sprint drag carry in 45 seconds. So I, no, nobody, there. yeah, yeah, because we all do that, right? Okay, I got 75 push-ups, but then the whole army, you know, is looking at this score and say, I got the top 1%, but next year, that top 1% may be higher. And we're all trying to move that goalpost higher to get better fitness. We don't want to settle. So that was that was some of the things, right? We, we, we put out a scale. We got 300. We're like, I woke up. Ah, you know, 50. I'm over 50. So I woke up. That's 300. That's good to go. So... If we, we said each year we're going to say, hey, where are we at? You know, the whole army will try to get better because we all want that top 1% in our, in our gender, right? We all want to be at the top. Um, so how do we move that goalpost? So that's one recommendation. So we, we got, we're working on that. But there will be an excellence badge. Uh, we're looking at that. Uh, but we've got two recommendations. We could. I'll, I'll chime in too, SMA. Go ahead. Ahead, yeah, sir. so um, it, it, it's something we are absolutely talking about in SMA. He nailed it. It's exactly right. And, and we do want to inspire folks to go to the next level, right? Um, but what we don't really know yet is how folks are going to score um, given this new scoring system. So we got to – that's new data for us, right? So we've got to, like, you all need to go out there and give it your best, and we'll have an idea of what this starts to look like. Um, and then we can talk about, you know, how we want to recognize excellence and inspire those to continue to continue to raise the bar. Um, th those kinds of results will also drive the governing body in time, whether to, to adjust the real step and determine whether or not we got the scale, you know, the way we want it. The last thing, so SMA, I wanted to add is uh, one of the things that we're looking at is an extended scale. And this would be nothing that could go on in an, an evaluation or anywhere in your record, but really it's for the schoolhouses that are out there, right? So if you're the commandant at the uh, armor school, for example, and you're trying to determine who the PT stud or studette is, or you name, you know, what whatever PME course, we know folks are going to go beyond 600. So where do they, you know, where, where, how do we measure it? And then we would say, okay, here's your little trophy. Here's your little award. Now you are the PT, uh, the winner. Yes. 
uh, Sergeant Major Staff Sergeant Birch from the 601st uh, Career Counselors. Um, kind of bouncing off of what First Sergeant asked you previously, but for soldiers coming into their reenlistment window and wanting to reenlist for assignments or schools that are after uh, 1 October, can they start 1 April using the ACFT as their? Uh, because um, right now we don't use the APFT unless it's just a passing. Can the soldiers start using the ACFT in order to um, for their record, basically for their SRBs, in order to? I'm so confused by your question. <laughs> so yes, on one eight, one October, you can. It will be on your SRB if that's uh, your question. It's it's more so for soldiers that are trying to reenlist for schools or for assignments after one October that currently have like the APFT or something, starting one April, can they use the ACFT instead for their re-enlistment window requirements? One April, yes. One October, yes. So sooner than one April. I'm sorry, you mean one, uh, one April this year? Right. Okay. Use the ACFT right. uh, for re-enlistment or extension. Right. No, you're good. There's no change. So if, if you've you know, if you you shouldn't be in the army right now if you failed the APFT. I just want to be really clear on this. So two years ago, we said if you have not passed the APFT, you have you are still flagged. And if you've been flagged for two years and you're still in the army, I'm a little confused. <laughs> but we said this. Go back and read the exhort around June of 2020, sometime after that point. We said, if you don't have a valid APFT, you have to pass the APFT. Okay, let's be clear. So that's that's still valid. And so if you somehow dodge that for you know a long time, it's a little confusing. So we said you got the you pass if you have not passed an APFT um, and you don't have an APFT in your records, you're in good standing in the army. And you should be re-enlisted or extension. I don't need to go back and check that, right? If for some reason you have not passed the APFT, I will question of why you're still in the Army. Okay, so 1 October, you know, re-enlist and extend, you're good to go. But in from now, 1 April, meaning seven days from now, not April 23, if for some reason you haven't passed the APFT, um, send me the first sergeant's name. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, um, cause I, I'll be really confused on that one. Uh, but that, that would still be the rule, right? If you haven't have a valid APFT score after two years, I'm a little confused on that. Um, that would still play out. So if you haven't, if you have no record because you've never taken an APFT, that's fine. You should still be able to reenlist and extend all the way to October. Okay. I, I hope I answered your question and, um, I hope I got that right. Okay. Yes. SMA from Facebook, uh, Zach Johnson wants to talk about equipment, uh, not just equipment in uh, guard and reserve, but also active duty for uh, recruiters who may be in a kind of remote and isolated places uh, and ROTC as well. And so General Klein, I know that CIMT has done a lot of work, but SMA, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I, I get the question a lot about equipment and um I'm going to ask you all, what do you think is the most failed event on the ACFT? What do you think? Bring drag carry. No. The deadlift. Absolutely not. The most passed event is the max deadlift. Hand release push-ups. No. Well, we got six guesses. <laughs> I think we, you know. The two-mile run. Everybody, Sergeant Major, I need more equipment. I need more equipment. The most failed event is the two-mile run. Start with that. Go get some equipment. No running shoes. <laughs> Go outside. Start running. Um, so, yes, I get this a lot. But here's another thing. What happened? We all went through COVID and we shut down like every gym in the United States Army to include those physical things outside. And why do I think this is actually good for us? Because we didn't have any equipment. I'm hoping you were doing some physical fitness. And guess what? Let me tell you what. I'm going to tell you this little exercise. I'm going to help you out. Right. Do this exercise. 
It will help you with the standing power throw. When I, I don't throw it too far, but it'll help you with all this. Do like this. You know, here, come up. You do a bunch of those, and so let me tell you how that feels. Okay, it's called the standing power jump, and it is brutal. Like my team, they love it. Do a lot of those. <laughs> okay, so not everybody in the whole army is going to have all the ACF equipment right there in your backyard. And what's new, and it should be new to anybody in here, you all don't have all that equipment right there in your backyard and your active component, right? We have training plans that will help you do body weight exercise that are really good for the Army fitness test, the Army combat fitness test. They're really good exercises. Um, is General Klein doing uh, standing power jumps? Oh, he's got the manual. Okay, so General Klein, over to you. Yeah, no, thanks. Awesome segue. And you had me with uh, buy, run, and choose, get out there and run. Uh, absolutely. That is the most failed event. The second one was the uh, the leg tuck. So, look, we did you a favor. You don't have to worry about that one. Um, but, right, so ATP 7-22.02, Holistic Health and Fitness Drills and Exercises, a really good book that the team put together, complete with pictures and everything on how to do exercises, will get you well on your way. And, um, you know, I'm embarrassed to even provide the actual uh, numerative answer, but 40,000 sets were bought of equipment out there. The NSNs are available. Um, there, it's what's been dis, uh, uh, determined that there is a lane out there for every 25 soldiers in the Army, regardless of compo. Actually, compo two and compo three have more sets of equipment per per individual soldier. But talk to your master fitness trainers. If they were trained since 2019, they've been trained on ACFT and they can really help you out. And if you're not getting what you want out of MFT, I own that course as well. I need to know about it and I can we can do better. And coincidentally, uh, we used to produce about 800 something, uh, I think it was like 830 MFTs a year. And uh, we are doubling that this month. And so we will be able to uh, educate 1600 a year uh, starting now. Sir, sure, thank you. and. The good news about that, if you sent him a note, uh, if you sent the schoolhouse a note, and I did this, I, I got it, I'm the Sergeant Major Army, so um, I did, I said, hey, here's what I'm struggling with. I said, this is the event, um, my weakest event actually is the standing power throw, and they said, hey, do the standing power jump. That's the great body weight exercise, and then tell me, go buy a ball, it said, do this exercise, and that will help you increase your standing power throw. And that's why I know that exercise. It's not because I made it up all on my own. I said, here's the event. What do you recommend to do? And it's also in the manual, but I just sent them a note and they sent me a plan. And that's what your master fitness trainers can do. But here's another thing we're trying to do too. We're trying to change, again, with Tradog, we're trying to change uh, the basic leader course. Um, I, my goal is not to get you graduate from the basic leader course and you're an expert at doing the extended rectangular formation. That's awesome. You should get that in your unit. The goal is that you will pass the nationally accredited tactical strength and conditioning and facilitator course and every NCO will have the ability to be a licensed and credited from a nationally recognized organization. The tactical, and in other words, you could actually li literally get out of the Army and get a job as a uh, tactical strength and conditioning facilitator. That is a national accreditation. And that's our goal is to get that in the basic leader course so every sergeant in the United States Army has that accreditation. Um, instead of extend the web. You know, so that's where we're, we're doing some revolutionary changes on that and how we can give you an individual plan. And let's go back to the whole ranch study. We And going back to what you're saying, First Sergeant, I have to know what you're scoring. I have to look at that in order to give you an individual plan. And that's what the whole Army had not had the capability to do. That's why we have to make it a test of record to get it you better. Okay. Sir, thank you for that. Mr. Mayor, our last question comes from Instagram, and uh, this is one that, that always precedes the, the ACFT questions that we get in forums. Uh, do you have an update on the study uh, and to the revisions on AR 600-9? No. No. no I'm just joking. Okay. Yes. Um, so 
we try to put these two in the same box. They're not. Re they're really a little bit separate. So there was a DODI change. The Department of Defense came out with a new. They really didn't say anything really revolutionary. It's like okay, services. You know, you can look at you know body composition. I was like, okay, we've been looking at body composition for a long time. Um, so maybe about two years ago, three years ago, I got a lot of questions on body composition. And it always tied to this same form. So about two years ago, I brought in the person that actually did the last study. I actually still worked for the Army, still worked at USERI, and was a person named Dr. Friedel. And we had about a two or three hour session about body composition. Bless you. And I come up, he convinced me that, okay, the last study done in 2001, there's time to go look at it again. Uh, so we put the things in motion and talked to the TRADOC and my counterpart CIMT uh, again on body composition and we started the study that started in October um, and we went to Fort Bragg and we did an outbreak but we're not finished yet we didn't have all the demographics that we wanted so a lot of people said sorry major you didn't have this or that in your study and everybody accused it of being a bad study you you serum the people that did the study they were not very happy with those comments um, but we went back and we're doing it again and I wanted to make sure that we got all the demographics that we needed. We did different shapes. We need actually different ages. We need men, we need women, we need old, young, 19, 50. So when the studies come out, we, we did on, in October, I didn't get the complete demographics of what we were asking for. Uh, so we're still working on the study, so we did an outbrief on where we were at in December, but I'm not ready to go forward until we look at the full body. So right now, I think in March of this year, they're looking at more demographics in Fort Lee, and we may need to go somewhere else. We did a little bit more funding. We have the funding now, and I'm hopeful to get that packaged up and do an outbrief on something uh, in October, but it just depends on what the study says. Uh, so we have a preliminary decision. Actually, there's no decisions. It was a preliminary report, but we're not finished yet, and we needed some time to get the groups that we're asking for. Um, some of the groups we needed, we didn't have enough Hispanics. We didn't have enough Asian Pacific Islander. So I don't want to come out and go, well, what about this group? It's not fair uh, to this group. So we're really cautious on here's the demographics of what's in the Army in America, and then did we get that group on the body composition? And one thing we also did is I'll tell you, we doubled the amount uh, for women. So 18% of the Army, 16, 17, 18% of the Army is women. So we said we want 36%. So the, the group, 65% uh, will be men and all races, backgrounds, where you come from, and we kind of increase women to see what's the advantages or the disadvantages for that group. And that will not be ready for prime time. And we looked at ACFT. But we also need those, we need that data too. So when you come into the study, they're going to ask you, what is your ACFT score? And we document that. So if we were to go to something and says, well, if you score, if you score 600, do I need to do... Do we, need, do we need body composition for a person that scores 600? Probably not. So, um, but maybe we do. I don't know. That's what the second piece of that, the study needs to help us look at. Um, what, is, what does the test do? So not only do we need your scores on the ACFT, and we also need you to do the study. We've had people drive from one location to the other to do the study. Uh, you're more than welcome to, you might not like the results. Right. So um, I shared my results with the whole army at some point because I told them and then they reported on it. So I was like, well, that's not how I saw that going. I was trying to use that example. But Sarbanes Army's Grinston body fat was this. It was great. You see that in the news. So um, so one scale said, you know, I had, you know, some percentage. So they do all kinds of we bring. Uh, there are four measurements that we do. You a DEXA. It's a dual x-ray, and I can't remember the, the middle word, x-ray. They scan the whole body, and it is the gold standard 
on how you do lean muscle mass, bone density, and then it's an x-ray of your body. That's the best you can find um, that I've found. Any expert says that's the best scan of body weight, um, uh, of lean muscle mass, because we want lean muscle mass. The second one is um, the electrodes. It sends an electrode throughout your body and then gives you a score. And the, believe it or not, the one I really don't like is just scan your body. That was my highest, by the way. And it's like, okay, you go there, they just scan you, and you go, okay, based off this and your height, this is what your body fat is. Um, that one was like 17% for me. I'm like, oh, that's terrible. Um, you know, my most lenient weight one for me was the tape test. So the scan said 17, the tape had 11. It was the lowest body fat of all the scans. So I, I will caution you also, um, that was not true for everybody, by the way. I'm just telling you what it was for me. So some groups we found it was a, maybe not exact opposite, but uh, depending on the machine, um, your body fat was actually less in a scanner than it was for the tape. And that's what we got to work on. So I'm not ready to tell you what we're doing yet because we got a lot of work to do. But for some of you, you may not like what you get. <laughs> so, so for me, I, I was one of those. I like, I like 11. I didn't like 17. Um, so we got, we got some work to do. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. My goal is to get some out by October. Okay. But we may need more time. But we're, we're almost there. We got all the money we need. We're doing this thing. Okay. Right. Sir, anything to add on uh, body composition? Now you nailed it. it the, the funny thing about the scanner, so I did it as well, but the funny thing about that DEXA scanner that the SMA is talking about, you may not realize this, but you actually have fat behind your eyeballs. All right, so it's going to add that in there as well. <laughs> the tape is not all that bad. But, yeah, we did get some mixed reviews out there. Hey, SMA, we got uh, one more location I think we're looking at. We did Fort Lee already. We got one more, and I think we, we'll be good to go to wrap that one up. And uh, I'm glad you covered that one, SMA, because uh, – the uh, Facebook's lighting up like crazy all about the ar Army body composition. So I think you uh, you have suppressed the target on ACFT. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thanks. Um, anything else? We're good? I'm closing this out. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Um, kind of good. I'm going to close with where I started with. You know, we've asked you all to do a lot. Uh, I know probably for the last hour, hour and a half, or how long we've been here, we've talked about the ACFT. This is all about being a ready force. When our nation calls you to go do something, believe it or not, the president doesn't say, Sergeant Major, are you fit? They don't. And when they say, hey, go do COVID, they don't say, hey. It just says, hey, we need you to go here, and we need you to go now. Um, so whatever we do, we just to keep that right there in the – in front of us and say, we have to be ready for whatever the nation calls. And this is a good forum that we talked about because guess what? When you step off the plane, normally wherever you're at across the globe, you're gonna be at the peak physical condition that you will be at for that deployment most of the time. You know, you don't, in other words, you come off that plane with that physical fitness that you have. You might be better with your weapon over time. You might be a lot better with your tactics and combat. But that physical fitness, you can't go, hey, you know, I really wish I would have run just a tad bit more when I come off the plane. It's probably not the time when you're taking that, you know, injured soldier. It's like, man, I wish I'd done that sprint drag carry a little bit because my buddy needs to get over here to the aid station. So when you think about those PT sessions and you get in there and you're doing this, you're thinking about, Fitness, fitness matters. And when your nation calls, you got to be ready. And we're going to do what we've always done. And you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. And that's what we expect you. I am extremely proud of you. I'm extremely proud to be your Sergeant Major of the Army. And I'm extremely proud to be a former Big Red One soldier. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's presentation. Thank you very much to the 1st Infantry Division and everyone who tuned in online. Have a great day.